imagine being commissioned to dismantle a radioactive exhaust stack or to dispose of millions of tons of water contaminated with radioactive material. It is not a hypothetical situation. Today, close to a decade after the 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan, real people are facing these toxic questions. How to handle danger safely so as not to poison a people, a country, or the world's water supply? Our world faces inhuman challenges every day, whether industrial accidents, natural disasters, or self-inflicted catastrophes, circumstances that I call inhuman, because they compromise our safety and our survival. Our future world needs inhuman help. We will need robots. Until now, engineers, mathematicians, and roboticists have worked together to build and move single robots like this one. The model for this was simple, at least for me. When my son Nikon took his first steps two years ago, I saw math, a numerical sequence that played out like computer code called an algorithm. Isn't that what you see when you watch a baby walk for the first time? Turns out babies are the perfect mathematical models to help us understand the principles of locomotion that underline human agility. But like my son, I was not content with baby steps. I wanted my research to take off running too. A robot modeled after a boy is not enough to do the work our future demands. We will need teams of robots or collaborative robots, co-robots. And so we have studied new models to understand how to build more agile and collaborative robots. One model to inspire their form and another to exemplify their function. The first model was trotting around my house with Nikon, Telly. Ever notice how your pet cat or pet dog has an almost uncanny ability to land on its feet or maneuver the obstacle course of furniture and people in your house? Turns out four-legged animals exercise an unparalleled dexterity that enables them to traverse a globe of varied terrain. More than half of our world is inaccessible to humans and the real vehicles we have invented. So to be most useful, our robots should take form as quadrupeds. The second model was circling my house in the dirt ant armies. Social ants have evolved effective competencies to cooperate with each other towards collective goals. Collective phenomena in social ants are the result of a hundred million years of evolution. They work together to transport large payloads that can be hundreds or even thousands of times the individual ant. They work in homogeneous or heterogeneous teams with smart leaders to carry objects over rough terrain to their nest. An impossible feat alone is made possible together. So our quadrupedal robots must function like ants. With models in place, we could now ask a new question, one that is still plagues us today. How do we mobilize teams of collaborative leg robots? Put another way, how do we get individual robots to work together to solve a problem when they have no intuition 
to react sensibly to changing circumstances. We could just throw into one computer all of the programmed instructions we have created for the single leg robots, and when their instructions overlap, hope they will cooperate. Doesn't sound good, does it? Here is why. Let me explain the calculations necessary to inform a single robot's movement. The quadrupedal core robots we are engineering have a manipulator that looks like this. Essentially an arm that enables them to help humans with manual labor-intensive tasks like construction, manufacturing, assembly, or disaster relief. Each of these robots must decide where it will move how, and how much force it will exert on a target while maintaining its balance. The execution of these variables depends upon the control algorithms we create for the robots. Remember, control algorithms are sequences of computer implantable instructions that address the decision-making problem for individual members of a team. For example, a set of algorithms must compute the required torque generated by each of 22 joint motors during every millisecond of a single robot's movement from point A to point B while accounting for any environmental obstacles it could encounter. Okay, so that's for one robot. Now imagine a team of 50 collaborative leg robots working together to carry a container of contaminated water. Individual team members still have the same variables, where to move, how much force to exert on their target, and how to balance, plus an additional variable, how best to coordinate its individual movements with others to play as part of a team, like leader, pooler, or lifter. That means we would need to design and implement control algorithms that compute required torques for 50 times 22 joint motors while accounting for thousands of optimal decision variables, environmental, circumstantial, or otherwise, every millisecond. And if that is not enough, all of these decision-making algorithms will have to be executable in real time. Okay, we buckle down and do it, right? Like ants. Well, we have a few problems that ants have had about a hundred million years to solve. At the root of them is the fact that we cannot have a centralized computer to disseminate and coordinate the control algorithms like the ones I just described. It creates a computational bottleneck, too much input for too complex an output. Put another way, one computer brain cannot interpret the data from all joints and variables and relay instructions back to robots for simultaneous optimal function. We must instead establish a paradigm shift from centralized approaches to more versatile approaches that use distributed networks of computational algorithms to orchestrate sophisticated core robot teams. Each robot must have its own computer and computational algorithm that is resilient and versatile enough to make cooperative decisions based on its own measurements. And if each robot function reactively, it can efficiently cooperate with others. Okay, how do we do it? The evolution of robotic teams that cooperatively manipulate objects can be described by complex systems. Complex systems are composed of many components that interact with each other. In my lab, we develop what are called advanced distributed control algorithms based on optimization techniques that allow collaborative locomotion of leg robots while carrying objects. But every step forward prompts a new question, and the search for answers leads me back to my yard. 
where Nikon and Telly are playing. Looking closer at the ants, I wonder, how can our mathematical algorithms replicate the biologically driven collective phenomena that these social insects have perfected? How can we advance the growing body of research suggesting that the animal locomotion control is achieved through distributed control schemes? How can we transcribe ant behavior into control algorithms and wire those instructions into mechanics of co-robot brains? Answers would not only save lives, they would improve the quality of human lives. In addition, to disaster relief, medical applications of distributed control algorithms and collaborative locomotion include the development of robot guide dogs for the 1.3 billion people living with visual impairment and the development of powered prosthetic legs to stabilize accident victims and people with disabilities. Our future cities need robots, teams of robots, to execute sensitive and sophisticated solutions to otherwise life-threatening environments, to bring stasis and efficiency to our ever-increasing human needs, to collaborate with humans, to navigate an uncertain future that is guaranteed to include a complexity only matched by an interconnected network of quadrupedal co-robots. How do we get there? The answer might be crawling in the dirt.